welcome or welcome back. Uh, I have another knitting podcast to share with you guys. It's been about two weeks since I filmed the last one and I have made quite a lot of progress on the projects that I do have. Um, I don't have any finished objects today, but um, plenty to talk about with my um, works in progress. And then I have a lot of really exciting yarn acquisitions that I can't wait to share. Um, this past weekend, I visited Washington, D.C. and um, to take some engagement photos. And I was able to wear my province sweater that I made um, with the dream to be able to wear it um, underneath the cherry blossom trees. And the photos turned out really cute. I'll, I'll pop some up on the uh, screen to share. And... Um, yeah, while I was in DC, I also visited Looped Yarn Co. I didn't get to visit the other one, I just went to one, um, but that was honestly enough because I was in heaven walking in there. <laughs> so yeah, we'll talk about that. But yeah, it's a beautiful day here in New Jersey. It's like 75 degrees outside and sunny, so I'm definitely going to take advantage of that. Um, so I was able to pull out my t-shirt my knitted t-shirt this is my Karina tee um, which is a pattern by Sari Nordland it's an all over textured cabled t-shirt and I knit it with Knitting for Olive cotton merino in the color dark ochre and I like this I don't love how it fits me and the color is like a little bit too much I think for my skin tone but I try to pull it out when I get the opportunity to wear it. So in other news, we had an earthquake here in New Jersey and funny story, I was literally just sitting on the couch knitting when it happened. So I was very caught off guard. I have grown up in the Northeast in um, Pennsylvania and then I have lived in New Jersey now for five years and I've never experienced an earthquake before. I was quite startled all of a sudden like you know I'm just knitting my sweater and the house starts shaking and I thought that it was just wind from outside that was like super strong but it kept getting like more intense and to the point where I was like there's no way that wind is doing this to the house so it lasted about 15 seconds and it like grew in intensity and then it just stopped and I was like frozen for quite a few minutes um, and then I started texting people like, hey, did you feel that? Um, like some of my friends were in New York City at that time. So, and I'm, I live probably like 30 minutes from New York City. So yeah, I was texting them and they're like, we felt that too. So it kind of registered in my brain in that moment that it was an earthquake. I wasn't even thinking that it could be an earthquake while it was happening. So I really feel for you guys who live in areas that experience earthquakes often because um, that was pretty terrifying and I didn't know what was happening or how long that was going to last. So my heart goes out to people who have to experience that a lot and much worse. So yeah, but yeah, I just thought that was interesting. One, that that even happened here in the first place, but also that it happened while I happened to be knitting. So yeah, I can officially say that I have knitted during an earthquake now. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Today I don't have, I think I might have mentioned, I don't have any finished objects, but I do have works in progress. So I'm just going to get started talking about those. So the first work in progress, in my last podcast, I had made it my goal to finish this sweater by today, but unfortunately that did not happen. It is almost done and I'll show my progress that I have on it, but unfortunately I did not finish it. So I'm sorry um, to the people who were excited about me finishing that the sweater by today. Uh, by next time it will definitely be finished and it will be blocked. So this is my Dorney sweater, which is a pattern by Rebecca Klo um, or Crayabea here on YouTube. It's an all over, uh, well, it's raglan and it's all over cabled um, textured sweater. Yeah, it's very like scrunched up and bunched up and stiff right now. So it looks like very tiny, <laughs> but um, the progress that I've made over the last two weeks has been getting work done on this other sleeve yeah I'm probably I'm over halfway done with this sleeve I just have like quite a few more inches and then the cuff and then it's done 
I'm very excited to finish this. It's I, I don't know if I'm going to actually be able to wear it uh, this spring, but we'll see. It's made of wool, so um, the yarn I'm using for this is La Bien Ami Cori Worsted Weight Yarn, which is a very woolly wool, very prickly, very warm. So if I don't get wear out of it this year or this season, at least I'll be able to wear it in the fall and winter. So yeah, I'm really excited. Um, love this color i don't know why the camera picks it up as if like there's like a line here of color because that's not how it looks like in real life um this yarn like does like it is kind of like a tonal i guess like there are different variations you know what i guess i could kind of see the color change maybe just like the skeins I was using but I don't know it the camera is making it look way more dramatic than it is in real life so anyway um yeah I really don't have much to say about this other than the fact that I'm really excited that it's almost over and I get to get it off the needles and block it and see it like come to life because it's very like demotivating to me at least like having a sweater or any project that like is super like bunched up and stiff just because it's like cabled or you're doing like ribbing or something um it makes me sad that i don't know how this is gonna really fit once it's blocked but i think it'll be fine i love this color i think i said that yeah i don't have much else to say about this right now but when it's finished i will give much more in-depth um, information about this sweater so yeah this is my Dorney sweater almost finished and that's that in my last podcast I talked about this sweater too so this sweater is my um, Gestel tongue sweater by Evie Knitwear she's a German designer and um, she has this like very basic raglan uh, sweater pattern but it's pretty customizable so yeah, in the last podcast, this is where I was. So I left a stitch marker here. This is where I was in the last two weeks ago. And this is how much I've gotten done. <laughs> the whole body and a whole sleeve I have done now. So yeah, all I have left is one more sleeve, which is exciting. I started this on March 20th. So it's been like two or three weeks now. And it's almost finished. I last time we spoke i had said i think that i was knitting the size uh, three so i had casted on enough stitches to knit the size three but as i was going through like my raglan increases and i was working through the yoke i felt like it was getting kind of big so i actually ended up stopping where when i reached the amount of stitches for size two even though like i had intended to knit the size three the body and the sleeves and everything are um, knit to the size two. So even though my gauge is perfect, like it's exactly right, um, or ex it's exactly what the pattern calls for, it still ended up being, um, I think the size three would have been a little too big for what I was going for. Um, I'm really happy that I am doing the size two and I have tried this on so far it fits really nicely and after blocking it's gonna like stretch out and just bloom. Um, this yarn is a super wash wool, so it will stretch and even, you know, before blocking, you can see how stretchy and bouncy this is. So yeah, I'm really excited. I'll give you a little close up of my raglan increases, which I'm really proud of. The only modification I've made to this pattern so far, and probably the only one I will make, is that I did a twisted rib for the collar and the hem and the sleeves. So uh, I'll give you a little close up of that. So this is, you know, before blocking, but yeah, I did do the twisted rib, which I think looks very neat. 
Um, and then I ended up doing two rows of double knitting and then um, I did a tubular bind off as you can see. If it will focus. I think it turned out really well. I do think, you know, because I did twisted rib and then the tubular bind off, you can kind of tell like the line of demarcation, I guess, is kind of how I would describe it. Like it doesn't look as seamless as if I just did like a one by one rib, but I have not found a good way or like the best way to do twisted rib and then like a tubular bind off. Um, like even on my body, you can see it's so nice and stretchy. Um, my bind off, it looks fine. I'm not worried about it, but it's just something to know that I noticed. Um, for the like the collar, I just did like a standard long tail cast on, so I'm there's nothing to really worry about there. But I can't wait to wear this um, like on a cool summer night. I'm thinking like sitting by the fire and it's still kind of cold outside. It's going to be one of my most worn sweaters, if not my most worn sweater. Just you know the fact that it's so basic and I can throw it on with really anything at any point, um, which is exactly what I wanted. So. I'm really excited for this. I can't wait um, to have it done. So um, hopefully by next time I will, but I've learned my lesson goals, but sometimes I don't always get to those goals in the time that I wanted to get to them. So no promises, but um, I just want to mention the yarn really quick. I'm using Barocco Ultra Wool DK in this uh, heathered gray color. The color number is 83108. And it's just this nice um, heathered gray. I really like this this color. I think I mentioned before I, I used to really not like the color gray. But here I am knitting a gray sweater. So there's that. Um, I guess let me move my progress marker even though the goal is to finish uh, a full sleeve. But let me just move it. So we'll move it to the beginning of this sleeve and we'll see how far I get by next time. All right, so there she is. We'll see where I am in two weeks from now. Uh, the other yarn, actually, let me grab it really quick because I have. Okay, so the last work in progress I have right now is a pair of socks and um, these are gonna be for my fiance's mom. I'm hoping to finish them by the time she comes to visit in May. So, um, so far I'm, I'm only working on the one sock and I'm about halfway done. This is um, what I have so far. I have the cuff and the leg and then um, the heel done. I'm just like about to start the heel turn, I think. So yeah, these are super cute. Uh, so this yarn is from the Sorella Disneyland collection and it's in the color Main Street. And I chose this specifically for her because she loves Disneyland and um, it's just like, I thought that would be thoughtful for her. Personally, I'm not like a huge fan of these colors, but they, they're really cute. Like I love how this yarn kind of self stripes yeah, I think this is gonna be really cute. She has very small feet. She wears a US size five women's. So I feel like I'm gonna have a lot of this left over. But yeah, just showcase the yarn and um, yeah, these are just, I don't have much to say about these right now. Yeah, that's it for now. All right, works in progress. Now let's move on to yarn acquisitions. The first one I want to talk about is this beautiful yarn. Um, this like stood out to me as soon as I walked in to um, the yarn store. And uh, I think I mentioned at the beginning, I visited Looped Yarn Co. in Washington, DC. Um, I didn't get a chance to see the other one, but <clears throat> I really liked this yarn store. I walked in 
and I saw like all of the yarn that I can't get my hands on here in New Jersey and even online like trying to find these yarns is it's hard because the shipping is expensive. This one, I had never seen this before in any of my local yarn stores or even online I haven't seen this. This is a brand called Walcott, Walcott Yarns and um, the, the uh, line of yarn is called Opus. So this is a 70% Argentinian Merino and a 30% Baby Alpaca. Um, for 100 grams, there is 384 yards. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's in the color Tropical Punch, by the way. This is like the perfect red orange. Um, I have always wanted to knit a ribbed beanie, like a bright ribbed beanie in either like an orange or a red. And um, this is the perfect color. I don't know if the camera is picking it up like accurately, but it's very like a mix of orange and red. So, <clears throat> Yeah, I really love this. It's very soft um, for a wool, I think just because it has that alpaca in it and the merino, it's just very soft. So I think that this is, it's not a fingering. It could be a fingering weight actually. I don't know, I have to do some research on it, but my hope is that I can knit um, either like a Manhattan hat or a weekend hat, hipster hat, like one of those ribbed beanies I would really love to make of this. I only have one skein, so I'm praying that that will be enough to get me through um, a very nice hat. I think the color will suit me very well, and I'm so excited for this because, like, this has been a dream, and I haven't been able to find a yarn that I really liked to knit a beanie um, in this color. So, yeah, this is very exciting, and I um, hopefully I think I'm going to cast it on soon because... I'm still gonna be able to get wear out of it. It's like on a, even in May, like at night, it's pretty cool. And I'm thinking about like wearing this when I go camping. So yeah, maybe by next time I'll have some stitches ready to show you, but we'll see. I almost like gasped when I saw that they had so much Isayer yarn. Um, and I've knitted with this yarn before and I absolutely loved it. This is Isayer Jensen yarn. This one is in the color 96 which is a very um, like warm, rustic brown. You can see there's like a lot of different tones and shades in this color. Oh so yeah, I had actually been envisioning knitting a brown cardigan and I wanted it to be like an acorn-y kind of um, brown but I hadn't been able to find one I wanted. I actually was gonna order some Brooklyn Tweed Shelter to knit, like in their um, brown base with like the red kind of Tweedy uh, speckles. Sorry, a dog is barking very loudly outside. I'm sorry if you can hear that. Yeah, I walked in and I saw this and I've knit with the Jensen yarn before and I really loved it. It is very rustic and uh, pretty scratchy. You know, doing a cardigan I think would be my best bet with this. Um, I, I've made the Ingrid slip over with it before, but I've paired it with mohair and I really don't wear it that often because it's so big, like it blocked out so big. So um, at least with something like a cardigan, you know, if it's oversized, it's okay. But I also was like a very new knitter when I knit that. So I had no like concept of sizing um, or gauge at all. I'm sure this experience will be different, but regardless, I really like using this yarn. I don't think I'm gonna pair it with a mohair. I think I will just knit it as it is. I'm thinking um, maybe a cabled cardigan. I have to look. I'm, I wanna look through my favorite things, knitwear um, patterns and see if maybe one of those would be good. Honestly, I don't know what Jensen, like what weight of yarn this is. I wanna say DK, but I could be wrong. If you know, please uh, leave it down below. I have, per 100 grams, I have 250 meters and I bought five of these. One just fell on the floor, so I'm not gonna get it, but I bought five in total and um, I have, I think, plenty of yarn to knit a cardigan, so. 
we will uh, see what this turns into, but I really love this color and um, I was torn between this and the like mossy green color, but I ended up going with this and I'm so happy. You'll notice like as my po as podcasts go on throughout the summer, I really still want to be focusing on like cold weather knits. I do plan to knit um, a few summer knits, but I just want to be more purposeful with my knitting and, you know, listen to what what I like and what I don't like and what I tend to wear more of. And um, I think I've talked about this in the past, so I won't like talk about it too much more, but you'll just see that I'm still going to be working on sweaters this summer um, alongside of my um, warm weather knitting too. So, all right, so the last... The last uh, acquisition I have is this yarn here. So this is so special to me. First of all, the pattern that is associated with this yarn is a Retrosaria sock pattern, and it's in the 52 Weeks of Socks Volume 2, which I have. Um, and I remember seeing this pattern like before it was even published in the book, I think on their Instagram, they had shared it and I absolutely fell in love with it. It's a color work, color work sock pattern in black and white, and um, I really, really loved that pattern. And it was uh, special to me because uh, I actually visited that yarn store when I was in Portugal, which is where they're based out of. To even like have this yarn and be able to knit those socks is kind of like a throwback to the past um, when I visited and um, it's just bringing back a lot of really good memories for me. Yeah, the yarn that I got was the Retrosaria Rosa Pomar Vovo yarn and it's 100% wool and I just got it in black and white. So the black color is 26 and then the white, it's more of like a cream as you can see, is the color 20. I love their, their branding, it's so cute. So yeah, it's um, made from wool, wool or sheep, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, um, this yarn is sourced from sheep that are native to the Algarve region, which is so cool because that's one of the places that I visited. If you can't tell, I really love Portugal and I'm dying to go back there, but Anyway, so yeah, I'm really excited to knit those socks, especially using this yarn. It's so special to me. So um, I got two skeins of the black and then the main color will be the cream. So I got three of those. And I'm hoping that will be enough. I didn't have the pattern on hand, so we'll just have to see. If worse comes to worst, I, I'm pretty sure we're going back to Washington DC in July to go visit um, a museum. So I can always stop and get more yarn while I'm there in, when the time comes, but that's it for my acquisitions. I do have some yarn coming in the mail. I ordered Sadness Garn Line to knit the plain yolk tee, so that should be here in the next week or so, and I probably will cast that on pretty soon before I cast on like my cardigan, maybe after I finish my sweaters, so... Yeah, that's all I have today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please consider subscribing and um, hitting the like and stay updated with my podcast to see the progress that I make on all these proje projects. <laughs> and if you want, I post updates on my Instagram, so I'll leave my Instagram down in the description too. But um, yeah, it was nice catching up with you guys. Let me know what you're knitting or anything you feel like sharing in the comments and I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.